Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Payne, and welcome back to another anime review video, and it's time to review the first of many movies from world-famous anime studio, Studio Ghibli, which was made back in 1985 by members of the production staff of the 1984 anime film Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which included producer Isao Takahata and director, world-famous, Mr. Anime Was a Mistake, Hayao Miyazaki. And even though this movie was made before Studio Ghibli's founding, uh, there were some people who considered that movie to be a Ghibli movie, and I was actually originally going to be reviewing Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. I actually might be doing that very soon. But considering that G-Kids uh, was screening uh, this movie that I'm going to be reviewing over the weekend, I thought I'd just start with this one, the official first Studio Ghibli movie. Here is the one, the only, Castle in the Sky. Castle in the Sky, also known as Laputa Castle in the Sky, is an action-adventure anime film that was directed and written by Hayao Miyazaki, produced by Isao Takahata, and was made by Studio Ghibli. It was released in Japan on August 2nd, 1986, dubbed by Streamline Pictures in 1989, and was re-released and re-dubbed by Disney on April 15th, 2003. It was 124 minutes or 2 hours and 4 minutes long. The movie is set in a steam... The movie follows the pair as they aim for the legendary island of Laputa while also being chased by air pirates who are searching for the island for its treasure and the government whose leader has a hidden secret related to the island. As always with a movie like this comes its fair share of stories behind it from uh, the fact that Laputa came from Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, even the movie references the book, to uh, later discovering that Miyazaki ended up reusing a concept that he made for Toho Animation 10 years prior. Uh, that ended up turning into the movie Nadia Secret of the Blue Water that Studio Gainax ended up making to uh, many references of biblical and Hindu culture but my favorite inspiration uh, out of the entire movie was from a trip to Wales that Miyazaki took a couple of years prior to making the film that inspired the architecture and the setting of the movie. While he was in Wales he witnessed the UK miners strike of 1984-1985 where Basically, what what it was was that the miners were protect, were protesting against the UK Parliament to prevent the coal mines from closing down. And in a couple of interviews later in his career, Miyazaki talked about how much he admired the miners for fighting for their jobs and how he wanted to reflect their strength in Castle in the Sky. As for its reception after it was released, it had its fair amount of influence on Japanese culture from influencing, again, the Gainax series, Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water. Uh, the Final Fantasy video game series, among many, many more video games, and uh, many Disney and Pixar movies, such as Atlantis, The Lost Empire, uh, and a couple recent ones, such as WALL-E and UP. But my favorite impact that this movie had came actually more recent than that. It made social media history in 2013 when fans of the movie tweeted the word BALSE at the exact same time that it was said in the movie. Now, for people who don't know what the word false is, it's said in a very important part of the movie towards the end. I'm not going to spoil it uh, for anyone who wants to see the movie, but to sum it up, it was ridiculous. Uh, to put this in perspective, uh, the previous record before this was uh, 33,388 tweets in one second, and that was during uh, New Year's 2013 in Tokyo. But during the point of the movie when false is said, that number went up to 143,199 times, destroying the last record. Now, Twitter's Japanese branch was ready for this, uh, as Castle in the Sky is aired annually in Japan, so people can plan this in advance on Twitter in what is known as the Balls Festival. Uh, as during this time in 2011, Castle in the Sky watchers had the old record for the most tweets in a second with 11,349, and not only that, but it was also seen as a way for Twitter to check their own capacity and manage the strengths of their servers, not only in Japan, but also in the United States and around the world. So to think that something like this could help make a social media powerhouse like Twitter as efficient as it is today is just shocking. It's amazing. It's awe-inspiring. So now we got all that pretty interesting information out of the way, let's get into the uh, review portion of this video. For anyone who is looking for an exciting way to spend the next two hours, this film is an excellent choice, featuring just the right amount of humor, exploration, wonder, and mystery to keep one interested. The artwork, although not- and while the characters that populate this tale are less complex than Miyazaki's other works, each has a memorable, endearing personality that stays with the viewer long after the film is over. Anime fans have often compared this movie to 
again, for the third time, Gainax's sci-fi adventure film, Nadia, The Secret of the Blue Water, as again, uh, Miyazaki helped create the story for that one as well. Where both differ in their execution, Nadia, although charming for the most part, suffered from taking a wrong turn at its midway point, devolving into cartoonish nonsense which all but distracted the viewer from the main plot, even though it did have a strong ending. Castle in the Sky, on the other hand, remains consistently entertaining and focused for its two-hour running time, and is all the better for it. Uh, while the film's epic tone is sometimes broken up by some cartoonish moments, it's never to the point that it detracts from the film. While purists will prop the leads aren't the strongest voices in the dub. Uh, the voice actor of for Pazu sounds significantly more mature than his character, while the voice actors for Shida speaks with an odd accent that fluctuates at times. That uh, in this case, a problem which actually works in favor of the character. And with that said, both do good jobs overall and provide a fairly believable chemistry throughout. Another reason to check out the dub uh, is for the aforementioned rescore by Joe Saishi. Uh, there are some instances where filling in some cr critically silent scenes from the original Japanese sub is a bit distracting, but the overall reworking is fantastic and in many ways improves from the original. And here in the dub, Isaishi displays his musical versatility and genius for matching music to visuals. The script adaptation borders on the loose side at times. There's quite a bit of extra lines and or commentary, uh, some of which are precisely funny or, or overdone depending on how you look at it. But aside from at least one debatable alteration, the overall characters, story, and spirit remain fairly faithful to the original. And on the whole, there is little point comparing the Disney version to the original language track as each puts their own stamp on the legendary masterpiece and frankly I like them both. Either way though, you, you can't go wrong with Castle in the Sky. It, it's one of Miyazaki's all-time greatest films and uh, I highly recommend it. I really do. And as you can guess, I'm going to give Castle in the Sky a perfect 10 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching my Castle in the Sky review video. If you like this video and want to see me review more Studio Ghibli movies, uh, you can hit the like button down below. If you want to see more anime review videos in the near future, uh, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down below. Or if you want to see some more anime review videos that I made in the past, there's going to be some on the screen in the description or down on my channel down below. And with that, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next video.